the first time someone remembered was in 1515. But as you may remember in the previous adventures in Create Above and Beyond, after trading music discs for a motivational barrel to fund the destruction of the dragon's homeland using one water wheel, I came to a realization. The dragon was still not defeated. And since I lost all my items due to the destruction of the end, the last remaining sign of civilization was the motivational barrel. If you may recall, this barrel has proved to be more painful to deal with than anticipated by prognostications. What originally started as a fun experiment evolved into the search for the impossibly infrequent substances that have a 1 in 2.5 million chance of spawning every time I opened this barrel. And once I hit the jackpot, I will become somewhat moderately rich. This was simply gambling in a more socially acceptable form. So today's episode will explore the most efficient way to waste time opening this cursed barrel. But there is one false Afian bone of contention. I was still stranded at the end with no suitable appurtenances to annihilate the Ender Dragon. So I recollected the motivational barrel, perambulated myself to the edge of the relocated end island, and used the barrel as an infinite source of building blocks to bridge approximately 1 kilo blocks towards the outer end islands, where I will loot end cities to become overpowered and get my revenge on the Ender Dragon. And after 10 bismuth 209 radioactive half-lifes, I got far more than the expected end cities. The end ecosystem has apparently been refined by yet another random mod or something, leading to a total difference of about nothing. Notable mention. This inconveniently positioned island that generated slimes that instantly plummeted into the unending void. So I had to build a roof over my head to prevent them from raining on me. Anyways this place is apparently the poise forest and also contains free lumber, scrumptious balloon food, and alien-like compositions. But these were all distractions from my true purpose. I wandered around until I stumbled upon the end city, which I will proceed to invade, armed only with motivation quotes from the motivational barrel. And against all odds and evens and all real algebraic numbers, the motivation motivated me to successfully loot the elytra and diamond equipment. Armed with these new accoutrements and also motivation, I made a heroic return towards the burial bridge and failed end island experiments, to annihilate the ender dragon once and for all. Which was made even easier with this sliced island slice that conveniently gave me access to the high ground which is apparently good or something. Anyways it shouldn't be surprising that the dragon was killed and blah 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 I am now back at the I go by lots of names headquarters with new equipment that replaced the old evaporated equipment. And I have a new gaming plan. What I was supposed to do by now was to make a factory to automate the machine parts I needed, which is the whole point of this mod pack. But I had higher aspirations, which included buying everything I needed instead of automating it at home. This is due to my limited knowledge of create, leading me to hire imaginary people to do things for me. This will be done with the trade market, which can simulate capitalism from Earth society from real life. And like last time, the money will be obtained by selling music discs from a disc farming setup, for an imaginary DJ with infinite wealth. There is just one issue with my plan. The trade market is expensive. I must master the second chapter of this mod pack, by getting the whatever this is. Which is 10 times more complex than whatever this is. To make things more complicated I also need whatever this is, which is golden ratio times more complex than whatever this is. But it will all be worth it because by the end of it, I will be able to automate unpackaging the infinite barrel to become inconceivably wealthy. And as you may know, all complicated gaming, begins with resource gathering. This mod pack not only has iron and gold, but also new resources that trick the human eye into thinking they were actually valuable. Diamonds have been impersonated by appetite. And redstone has gone extinct, being replaced by fake cinnabar. On the bright side I have unearthed charged certus quartz, which can be mixed with kitchen appliances to make redstone for electron tubes for the whatever this is. Due to realistic reasons, this will be powered by a new scientific discovery I made. With a mix of enough large and small cogwheels, I can reach speeds that were probably meant to be reached but cause the machinery to implode on itself. And also shut down the singular water wheel that was powering everything. So I doubled the water wheels. 
I also obtained the basin to manufacture rubber for the machines to create whatever this is, which is made with amounts of flowers that are unhealthy for nature. No matter how many flowers I have burglarized from the ground, I was constantly underestimating how many I needed. So I destroyed all varieties of botanical species in a one mile radius. Which brought me to an ominous sign that pointed this way. Without any further thought I decided to follow the directions of that stranger. Which only caused disappointment. This village had a lower GDP than St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It was located in a frozen wasteland, with half of the houses being gone for some reason. Causing me to get bored rather instantly. After processing ludicrous quantities of rubber from world exploration, I obtained even more random machines that I apparently needed. The main piece of whatever this is, aka the electron tube, is obtained by melting iron and injecting it with this newly obtained smeltery and spout. The iron is injected into this red equilateral 3 zonohedron from mixing water with crushed yummy cobblestone and charged certus and pure quartz. But this pure quartz needs to be covered in water and covered in water and covered in water 16 times, times 16, which was slightly less bad than I thought it would be. The reason why none of this is automated is because the price of setting up a factory was too much for now. All I needed was the trading station to reach my full potential. But then. Disaster struck. I realized that all of this gaming was escapable because the red equilateral zonohedrons are obtainable with a far easier way involving redstone. And this fake redstone from earlier was actually real redstone, which could get real. After recovering from this discovery I got all the materials required for the electron tubes. Now for connecting them all together, by using these artificial hands that click on objects while holding other objects, due to lack of a proper factory. I decided to do all these steps manually. Which went terribly wrong. But in the end all that matters is I successfully installed the vacuum tubes. The final thing I needed for the market was brass from interpenetrating molten zinc and copper in this oddly hypnotic process. And at the final step of the final step, I hammered a dropper onto this to get the trade station. But this fleeting juncture of victory was robbed from me when I looked at this page of the quest book and noticed I could have bought the trade station using just one music disc worth of bitcoin. Meaning that this hero's journey has been futile from the beginning. So far everything has seemed to be made redundant by a new discovery. But not all is lost. Because the semi-functioning factory will now be used to create the trapezo rhombo dodecahedron known as the magmatic dynamo which will power the trade station using lava. The way it works is I must purchase trade permits from the quest book, which I will deposit here along with bitcoins and energy, resulting in me apparently buying stuff out of thin air in the middle of nowhere. I am the only one remaining in a 50 light year radius, with the exception of some wandering traders that clogged up my water wheels, and some anti-gamers that protested against civilization. With these distractions out of the way I had a new problem. This station was useless if I had no money. The reserves had all been spent on permits and the motivational barrel. So I had to restart the music disc grind. As you may remember, there is an imaginary DJ that will buy infinite amounts of music discs from me in return for digital wealth. But since the last creeper annihilator despawned, I bought the so-called pet kit to name this new skeleton after infamous high pixel player Jonathan Arbuckle. Tricking the game into not despawning my new creeper shooter. I then began my first 9 to 5 work shift of farming music discs. Starting out with a measly 3 music discs, meaning my budget for today was 96 coins. So on 6 am, the real grind begins. I needed a more reliable food source than the motivational barrel. And the only edible food on the market, was rotten flesh. Which I bought from the imaginary voices in this block. I consumed this nutritious meal before returning to my 9 to 5 job. This was the gaming life. But since this day's work was mediocre. Today's budget was also 96 coins. With this I bought a permit for buying wood, iron, and slime. But unlike last time. This slime made a tolerable piece of slinging equipment, allowing me to jump and glide hundreds of blocks at once. The next day at work was absolutely splendid, netting me 320 coins. 
At this point I could basically buy whatever basic conveniences I wanted. The voices telling me to automate chapter 1 resources were finally gone. Because I could simply buy and design alloy online from even more imaginary people. Instead of destroying all flowers in reality, I could just buy rubber. This rubber will be used to create conveyor belts, which is the main ingredient for the mouth-wateringly mediocre automatic motivational barrel opener, so I can finally fulfill the clickbait requirements for this title. At this point I could still get away with powering everything using water wheels, which is before I unlock the immensely powerful giant yellow circle engine. Fortunately the act of unboxing barrels only required about three water wheels. The way this works is that a deployer will place the barrel on this drill, causing it to drop all its contents to be stored in this chest. The motivational barrel will then be filtered out to be placed again, leading to an infinite loop of motivational barrel purgatory, which will be its final fate after approximately 10 hours of service. The issue is that this didn't work, because the setup couldn't tell the difference between the normal barrels and the motivational barrel. Luckily there was some other person who achieved motivational burial purgatory, using a far simpler factory. The bad news is this required more whatever this is. Leading to a loss of approximately 1 quadrillion bottom quark half lives worth of time, to create the brass funnels. Using some item filters, the motivational barrel can be pulled to the side while the motivational quotes and apples will be stored here. Since this was unbearably slow, I made the corporate decision to use more cogwheels to speed up the conveyor belts to highway speeds. And after testing this, this somehow worked. It wasn't working the way I intended, which made it work better than I originally intended. The barrels were being processed at imaginable speeds leaving behind massive amounts of motivational quotes in the containment facility. Now all I had to do was wait about 2 months for a 63% chance according to RNG algorithms math random true random statistics, of the barrel dropping its extremely rare loot. This industrialization in society itself has been sponsored by the DJ and imaginary market people. And I will be taking it further in the next episode of this curse mod pack. So remember to subscribe. Like subscribe turn off ad blocker notification bell comment the video. And shout out to the channel members. Reminder that memberships will be disabled on October 10th.